It's more like facial recognition, like a sea of faces. The plants are a sea of faces. And maybe you only know a couple people in that crowd, but you can see them very easily. It's, it's the same mechanism in your brain. Hmm. It's a shape, you know, a leaf shape that maybe looks really similar to other leaf shapes, but like, that's your friend, you know? You know that person, you know the plant. Foraging is basically um, collecting food that's not cultivated. So for us, that means things that we don't necessarily plant, but that we know are there. So on this property, we cultivate things, things that we grow from seed or plant from transplants, and we tend and we trellis and all of that. And then we also harvest things that we just let grow wild, like wild chives that grow in the lawn, mushrooms when they appear, mm -hmm. acorns, um, chickweed. In my opinion, it has a lot to do with observing the same place over and over again and making a connection with a place in the world. Um, and for a lot of people, the argument against allowing foraging is to preserve nature, but without that connection to nature, I think that the importance of preserving it is lost on the populace. There are some things that grow wild that you can't cultivate, morels being an obvious one, and they are renowned for their flavor, as, and they should be in my opinion. Um, and if people aren't foraging and don't have, don't value foraging and don't feel it's important, then that flavor is, is gone to them. It's lost to them and potentially lost to society. The state of Ohio does not allow the sale of for, wild foraged mushrooms. Period. You're obviously allowed to forage on your own property. And so we do a fair bit of that. I feel like we know most things here that are edible. Next, we move on to um, private property of friends and family who are willing to let us forage on it. And then we move into the gray zone of all the places that you're not technically allowed to forage. Our public lands are in the city, are not allowed to forage. Correct. The national parks are usually prohibit foraging um, and collecting, and it's what, state forests? State forests and state parks each allow a certain degree of foraging. I mean, you know, if people see something that they can identify as edible in the wild and they're hungry and they want to, or they're curious and they want to taste it, like, I, that's, that's the frustration is I want them to be able to have that experience. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to bring that experience to people who can't get to the woods mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And that's just, not allowed in most places and I'm not in any position to become a giant landowner just to deliver that experience right. to people. Mm -hmm. But our communities are giant landowners and they do have edible food growing on them. I, you know, I would love to bridge that divide. Yep. And there's, there's a lack of education too when it comes mm. to these topics because people are so focused on the dialogue surrounding the legality aspects and there's not as much talk in the U.S. about the nutritional benefits of fruits that we are not cultivating. More uh, wild foods have more dense nutrition that we, that I think nutrition science is coming around to mm -hmm. understand as important and valuable. And you know, we just had the experience of going to Scandinavia, to Finland and Norway and Sweden for three and a half weeks. And that was a real eye opener to the, the kind of opposite way of dealing with foraging. Because in those countries they have every man's laws. And every man's laws are that um, every person on every property, public or private, can forage for the ephemeral things like mushrooms and berries mm -hmm. um, to their heart's content. And these things, lingonberries and chanterelles and cloudberries, showed up at market 
everyone from the consumers to the pickers to the restaurateurs to the politicos wanted those foraged foods to be available for people to eat so they like encouraged sustainable practices of foraging across the country oh there's oysters oh hi guys <laughs> No, wood oysters are like the best. I would love food and raw, real ingredients to be more valued, period. Promoting or allowing more foraging, especially of things that, uh, parts of the plant that aren't going to damage the ecosystem, like the fruits and the nuts um, and mushrooms, would allow for a culture of stewardship to mm. be, um, developed and adopted by more people than we currently see.